You know, Muddy Waters once wrote that he was going to get so high that it was going to be a crying shame. Well, I'm here to tell you that being high ain't all it's cracked up to be. Hey, welcome back to the garage, everyone. All right, today on the old W126, we've got a bona fide brake fix action to take, and I cannot lower my driver's seat, and that bugs me to no end because I like to sit low when I drive. That's just me. Other folks like to sit high, like Muddy Waters. Other folks like to lay back. Other folks like to sit straight up like this, like. 90 degrees, I, a friend of mine likes to drive his car like with a seat at 90 degrees, literally 90 degrees. Drives me bonkers, but he loves it. So hey, you know, to each his own. So today, I'm gonna pull this door panel off here and we're gonna dig into this switch right here. Uh, I cannot lower this seat from this switch. All the rest of the functions work, but I cannot lower it. I thought maybe it might be a connector underneath the, under, under the seat, but I'd be hard pressed to believe that one of the wires came loose in the connector, so I, I think it's probably in the switch. So uh, we've had a door off these cars before, so we're not gonna dig too deeply into the, uh, all the details involved with how to pull the door panel off. Actually, you can look up my uh, previous series in this channel uh, where I removed the passenger door uh, panel, and uh, it was quite detailed. Anyway, so we'll take all the same steps and procedures here on the driver's door. So uh, let's go ahead and get busy. All right, I got the battery uh, disconnected here. We're gonna go ahead and take this uh, top piece of trim off first. And our, uh, if you hear some noise in the background, that's Rick doing his usual Saturday yard maintenance with his leaf blower. And this should just slip right off here. I, th I think, yep, there we go. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little, uh, metal clip right there it slips down in there so uh that's the you know the thing about the germans when they design a car or this era of cars everything just slips together just very precisely and i kind of dig that let me get our uh lock here off next and we'll take the lock trim or the latch trim plate off I'm gonna go ahead and take this drink holder off next. This actually has a Mercedes part number. I believe it was a dealer add-on option because as you all know, these cars did not come with drink holders. And I, there's a kind of a love-hate relationship with these things. It's kind of nice to have a, a drink holder that's up out of the way, but you don't want to slam your door with your cup of coffee in it, that's for sure. And this one is pretty loosey-goosey anyway, so I think I'm probably gonna need to do a little repair. And uh, because they just put, you know, like tapping screws into the door card, and that just, you know, that's really kinda, well, it kinda sucks, really. Well, up next, we're gonna take this little uh, plastic cover off to gain access to the screws behind it. We'll go with a screwdriver. Yeah, that works better. That works better. Come on off of there. I could probably do with replacing this little. It's just a little bit, you know, where I've been digging in there. I've had this door panel off before, but um, 126 766 0190. That is the part number for that little jobber right there. Into the floorboard with ye. Hey, look at that. There's a screw back there. All right, let's get this screw out right here. Let me get this cover off next. Let's get these buttons off. This guy right here is our culprit. That just pulls right off, by the way. That one doesn't. Come on now. There we go. No, it's not broken yet. <laughs> All right, up next is a little C-clip around this piece right here and I'm sure it won't be fiddly at all to get off. We just don't want to fling it across the room and so that it's never seen again. 
There we go. I got it past the first little retainer. That little thing's a booger. Set that in the console. Now we can get this little piece off here, I think. And it, 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 it's, uh, it's got a flange that goes into this piece and it is flange under, underneath that as well. So uh, you gotta you know, hold your mouth just right here. There we go, that comes off. Yeah. Actually, I've been in here before, so the flange that went underneath the uh, trim broke off. So I took a piece of sheet metal and I JB welded it to the back side of this. I forgot about that. <laughs> Still works. All right, so let's take this piece next. Slide that down. Let's see, is that as far down as I can get it? I guess so. Doesn't matter. We exposed the screw holding the handle on. That's what the, what the goal there was. So that comes off. That's actually a that's a piece of cast. Uh, I don't know if that's aluminum or steel. Anyway, no, no matter. All right, we we'll get these screws out underneath here next. There we go. Sometimes a long screwdriver is best. It gives you gives you a lot of leverage. All right, we'll take this big rascal off right here next. I think. Not sure if that's necessary. I can't remember. I'm gonna take it off anyway. And there's another small one here, back behind this uh, switch assembly. All right, we're gonna disconnect the uh, lamp next. Yeah, I forgot about this other screw on the left side here. That switch assembly has to be loose when you remove the uh, door card, otherwise things will break. All right, we should be free. The way these door panels are held on here, you have a you know like a, a flange on the back of the panel that slit, flips into a, a slot. All right, so if I pull this, so when I pull up on this, the bottom of this hole here is butting up against this cast piece that holds the handle. It's been a while, so what I'm gonna do is just uh, take these screws out here and loosen this whole affair up. There we go. Let's just take that off of there. I don't know why I didn't do that to begin with. There we go. Look at that. See there? It just falls right off of there. Once you get everything free, you got to take the uh, wire loose from the uh, lamp here. There we go. All right, let's get this thing over here and set it aside. All right, I got the battery hooked back up here. Uh, let's see, without anything, you know, with everything uh, kind of disconnected. So that goes down like that. That doesn't, that goes up, the back goes up, but it won't go down. Trust me, the back was already too far up. Front part works fine. Front and back works fine. Seat tilt works fine. But I can't make this guy here go down. There's actually a vacant connector right there. What is that about? Must be an option of some sort. Or maybe it's a test point. I don't know. Yeah, let's disconnect the battery, disconnect the wiring and all that jazz and get it over on the workbench. All right, let's get over to the workbench. All right, we got her over here now. Uh, got a screw in the back. Let's start by taking that out. It seems like a good plan. I can't recall if I've taken one of these apart before or not. I was hesitant to take this door panel off of this driver's side because there's other things that I have to do to the driver's side, but this switch was just bugging me to no end. And uh, I was like, man, I, I can't put up with that any longer. I, I need to be able to sit comfortably in the car Let's see what we can do here to not break this plastic. Hey, we got one. I'm thinking there's probably some springs in here that are gonna go bling. 
So we'll keep our finger on that. There we go. Yes, yeah, got a little pressure on it. Interesting. Yeah, oh yeah, yep, yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> There's ball bearings rolling around all over the damn place. Cause, oh hell, just pour them out. There we go, just pour out all those connectors and see that? <laughs> oh hell, now I gotta figure out how to make all that work again. <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Come on out. There, there's two more springs. Look at that. There's another one. Why do I do this to myself? You're still not disconnected here, Harris. What are you doing? There we go. Oh, this is going to be fun. There you go. All right, so there's the inside of your door switch. I hope this is what's wrong with this uh, switch. We're gonna find out though. So we have tidbits and doodads and uh, see there, the, that's a brass bushing that rides inside that thing. And all of these switches have a brass bushing that goes through them. These are the buttons for the seat memory. Yeah, I forgot about, I didn't really, I wasn't thinking about the seat memory. And then here's a thing with a spring in it and <sighs> okay, so right about now is the time when I sit here and analyze this and teach myself how it works. And then I come back in four or five hours and tell you guys all about it. So I think probably we'll do that. This thing here at the top is a seat memory. It's kind of separate from the rest of it. But there is one electrical run that goes from there anyway all right give me a little while i'll be back all right so uh, a little more information here so this one stayed in place thankfully so i could see an example of how it works there's two ball bearings at the bottom of it here and here and so you can see what the ball bearings sit in they sit in these little cups here and here and the bearings simply serve as a, as a pivot point and then you have these connectors, little pieces of springy brass that will connect between two points. And you can see those uh, little spring pieces. That There's one here, right? And this is the back and forth of the seat. So if you move this guy back and forth here, you can see the... Uh, springy piece of brass moving back and forth. All right, so um, you've got a, uh, a little brass bushing there and it sits in these pivot points. There's one here and there's one here. So if you wanna put this lever back in place, that's your uh, front up and down, All right? And you're gonna have some of these uh, spring-loaded brass things that sit underneath and they will sit and connect, let's say, between this point and this point, and you'll have springs and ball bearings all sitting underneath that uh, to uh, make all that happen and put tension on it. And here's the one that wasn't working. This is the uh, back up and down. So, you know, I don't know why it wasn't working. I'm assuming it was just not making very good connection. Probably just clean this all up, shine up all of these uh, little uh, connecting pad points and then put antioxidant on them and it'll probably just work just fine. My only challenge is putting it back together properly. <laughs> By the way, th this one has a little white tip on it and it's in the middle and the one up here that controls the, uh, the tilt of the backrest has a little white tip on it as well. I'm not sure why the white tip is significant. Uh, maybe just to hold the button on, probably. That's kind of what it looks like right there. See, the back side of the uh, little connector has a little dome of uh, solder or whatever to uh, see connection point. Now, maybe that's riveted in place, or maybe it's adhered with some sort of adhesive, or not sure. And then we have this guy here. Where the hell does that go? Mm, that looks broken. Is that broken? That little bit right there, you see that? 
You see that right there? That looks broken. Where does that go? All right, so this guy right here looks like there's a pivot point over here and there's a couple of contact pads down there. This slips and rests down in there like that pretty well and it clicks in place. So I'm not sure what that, I'm not sure what's going on there. I think I'm gonna break out the factory service manual and see if there's a diagram for this thing. Probably not, but I'm gonna go see. All right, so uh, just wanted to make sure I had all the equipment. So I've got uh, six of these little pivot contact points here. And we need one here between these two points, another one between these two, and then two more over here, and then two more over here on this one. All right, so that makes sense. Those numbers line up. Now, the ball bearings, each of those little balls, uh, you will have, I believe, you're gonna have a ball that goes down inside each one of these, those square holes right there. We're gonna put a round ball on a square hole, I guess. And then, on top of that ball, you're going to have a spring, and we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight springs. Actually, nine. There's one in there. And uh, so that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We forgot about the springs that go in there. Anyway, so all those springs and balls and everything, they go in there and they tighten all that stuff up. So I think really got a pretty good handle on this thing that and uh went inside and printed out the diagram for the uh left hand power seat with memory model year 1984 and i was looking at this thing just wanted to see which wires i need to be fiddling with if i need to so you can see here here's the front there's the front up and down that's a, I guess it's a black and a white wire. And then the entire seat front and back is a blue and a violet maybe. And then here's the rear yellow and green. So the rear up and down is the yellow and green wires. So if I need to, I can fiddle with those and do some testing. So it's good to have the service manual. And uh, there's links in the, my Google Drive for this service manual. Uh, so. If you, uh, if you don't have it or whatever, just uh, put a comment down below in the video and I'll, I'll send it your way. All right. So, uh, all right. So that, no, up next, I'm going to go ahead and just clean all of these contacts and just, I'm just going to go to, go to town cleaning, probably use the Dremel tool and all kinds of stuff. So, all right. So let me get busy with that and I'll be uh, back uh, shortly. All right. So I got a Dremel tool here with a, it's actually a vinyl plastic brush. It's not very aggressive at all. And uh, I'm going to use this to clean up all these contact pads. The center one is held in place, and it's got a couple of uh, little metal uh, shims right here slipped inside this plastic housing, and it is readily affixed in there and it was working fine i'm not going to mess with that because i don't want to try to take these little pieces of metal out of here because this piece of plastic if i break this plastic right here i'm done All right you're done it's game over so uh, i think i'm gonna leave it right there as far as the cleaning goes and oh, i take that back there's a two more over here which i don't know what they do but well, I can't get to that one with the Dremel, so I'll just, uh, I guess I'll just give it a scraping. Probably end up just giving them all a scraping in addition to the Dremel action. The up and down of the back part of the seat worked on occasion, but it was really flaky. And uh, that's why I'm, I'm thinking it was the... This, well, now that I see how complicated this switch is. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna hit each one of these little pads with just a quick little 
dose of sandpaper. All right, I think I'm gonna try to put this thing back together. Wish me luck. Um, let's go for the uh, seat back first. Make sure I get this uh, in here correctly. Where's my Where's my cover? Let's see. Yep. All right, so that goes there like that. All right, I got some uh, basically some industrial grade uh, antioxidant. No ox. <laughs> Buddy of mine gave this to me years ago and for small projects this tube should last me uh, and for the rest of my life <laughs> so let's see it bears the question how we want to do this so I guess maybe I'll just kind of dab a little on each point where the um, pivoting brass connector goes and uh, when we put it back together, it should help us out a little bit. You know, kind of, it's sticky, so it'll keep stuff from, you know, flying apart on you. So these little brass guys just slip down in there into these little pivot points. And there's the first one. I got that one in place there. And you can see where I put the Noox compound in there. And let's see. Get that guy in there. There we go. All right, so now we're going to uh, install this guy. And it sits in the pivot point here and here. Like that. So now we get a, uh, a little ball bearing down in that side and a ball bearing down in that side ball bearings don't do electrical continuity they uh, they simply uh, offer tension for the switch that's what these springs and ball bearings are what bring the switch back to its proper position after you release it so let's get that down in there. There we go. Now, so you're asking yourself, how does that work? Well, let's take a look at the cover here. On the inside of the cover, you have these little plastic outcrops here that are wedge-shaped. It's like high here, then the middle part is low, and then there's a high part. And these press on the springs, so there's a tendency to want to recenter itself uh, when you activate the switch due to this little, the way this is shaped in here, you can see it. Now, this guy here, it connects between these two points here and here. I'm not really sure what it's for. Um, there's a little, there's a little gap right there. And it lines it lines up with this guy, but is that like a test point or something, where you can get in there and fiddle with it and make it do? I don't know what that is. Maybe it'll come to me here in a little bit. Anyway, let's no ox this guy. I think we need to put a ball bearing down in there, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken. All right, so I just realized something that uh, <laughs> I think the. Uh, these switches require ball bearings on top and bottom of the spring because I have a lot more ball bearings than I originally counted. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. The 13 goes over here with this little guy here. So each one of these should have four. Four for this guy, four for this guy, that's eight, and four for this guy. All right, I think we've got a handle on it here. All right, now let's start with the one in the middle that I can't take out. It's got two balls underneath it already, and there's the other two for it, and there's its two springs. This guy over here is going to have two springs, two pivoting connectors, and four balls. Same, same for this one over here. Two pivoting connectors, two springs, four balls. The top one, four balls, two springs, 
two pivoting, two pivoting connectors and they are already in place. This guy has a just this plunger and a ball and it goes right there. I don't know what he does. So I was confused, but we do have the proper number of parts. Now we can recommence our assembly. He gets a spring, so we got the ball in the below, and then a spring, and then I have no idea how I'm going to make this work. You're going to have balls on the top, right? Ball bearings, whatever you want to call them. They're going to be mashed into place by the tips of this plastic here. Rick's got the leaf blower out. <laughs> oh, mercy. And then I got to figure out how to keep all that, keep those uh, ball bearings or whatever you want to call them in place on top of that spring while I slip that cover down. This is going to be a challenge. All right, so I'm just playing around with this top one up here, you know, just to learn on it. And this is going to have to be kept stable. And I'm probably going to use the Noox compound to uh, make it sticky so that those balls stay on top of the spring. And I'll have to do that for all of them. So when we put this thing on in place, nothing is disturbed. Okay, I think I've got enough practice to try to attempt this now. Uh, I got a piece of uh, quarter inch steel here underneath these two to keep this thing steady while I work on it. So this upper switch got the pivot points and the two balls in place. And we got two springs and two balls here. Uh, I'm gonna put extra antioxidant, which I already did for there. That's the reason those kind of stay there. They're basically glued. So up next, we're gonna go do this guy right here. If I put a little Noox on my parts, that'll let me um, grab a hold of them, put them in place in my mind. See how this is offset so this part here is a little longer than the other side on the uh, connector you can see where the offset is uh, off to the right so anyway it's kind of how you know which orientation it goes so let's see how does this work it has a little indexing point there we go getting this cover lined up is a chore in itself and we're going to keep all of these balls from flying off all over the place so everything's lined up I just went for the gusto here I don't hear any balls flying around. <laughs> I can't move that one. Screwed it up some kind of way. What about this one? No, they're all screwed up. Something's wrong with it. That one moves. That one's that one. Hey, we did one of we did one of them correctly. All right, I took it over there and put it on the car. Everything works. I can make it go down. Right? now which is what i originally intended this for uh but i can't go up because i can't move this this switch up so i've got to figure out what's going on there let me take this cover back off i'll be right back all right so we managed to take it loose without anything flying apart and that's the uh, no ox kept the uh kept everything in place now i something i did something wrong here maybe i don't have these see i don't have any travel there i can't go up i can't go up are they on backwards I'm guessing, I have no idea. Maybe I put them on backwards, I don't know. Let's see, what happens if I turn this one around and put it over here like that?
Yeah, I have full travel. I had them on backwards. That's why. Okay, that's cool. So I had these two uh, levers flip, flipped around. They're actually, if you look at them, I'm dropping balls everywhere now, but they each have a part number. There's a left and a right. So 32407 oh, is this one. It goes on the right. And I'll tell you the part number on the other one, just so you'll know. 32131 goes on the left. So that's pretty cool. We learned something there, didn't we? So I'm gonna put this back together, just like I did before, except correctly now, and then we'll get it back on the car. All right, we got the cover back down on there, and I got full travel on all my switches now. So yeah, I definitely had these swapped. They're different part numbers. So that's really good information. Uh, hopefully somebody can use that someday. The last step here before we put it back on the car is put this screw back in. There we go. Let's go put it on the car and test it. These uh, German connectors, all these electrical connectors on this car, they're just like, they're idiot proof. There's no way you can take them off or put them back on incorrectly. All right, let me hook the battery up. Rear upward. Works well. Rear down. Works well. Front up. Working. Front down. Forward. <sighs> Give me a break. Come on. You can do it. It doesn't work. Goes back. Forward. Oh, we got to take it back apart. Okay. How about the seat backrest? That works. It goes back. but it doesn't go forward. We have more work to do. This was working before. The front and back stuff was working before just fine. I probably got it screwed up a little bit in there. Let's see. Don't go any further back, get it back. That works. All right, battery back off, take it back apart again. Okay, I've had this thing apart like four times. I've got everything to work except for the backrest. I cannot make the backrest go forward. I can make the backrest go back, but not forward. Uh, I've got the uh, drawing here and the backrest, power comes into the backrest switch. And for forward, you gotta put some hot on the orange wire. All right, there's an orange wire right there. So I got the battery disconnected. I'm gonna take the cover off the back of this connector and I'm gonna put 12 volts of juice on that uh, orange wire and just make sure everything works properly. So what did I do to make this switch work for the most part? Uh, you know those little spring-loaded contact pads that are shaped like that? Well, what I did was I flattened them out. In other words, they're, let's say they're bent like that. I flattened them out. I m made them much flatter. So when they pivot, so they were like, let's say they were like this, and you had to pivot them really far to make them contact, but I flattened them out like that. So when you pivot them, they make, they much more readily make contact. So that's what I did. Pretty basic, really. But for whatever reason, uh, the backrest on this seat does not want to go forward. I still think it's a switch related issue, but it may not be. There we go. Hey, look at that. 322900. I guess that's the part number. Oh, we lost our little. Oh, look at. Oh, I know what that is. It's a little paper wiring diagram. It's a little paper. I keep losing it. That's so cool. I never, I've never seen that before. Well, maybe you guys have. I never have. It's a little paper wiring diagram that goes in the end of the, uh, and it shows you uh, which color wire is supposed to go in which position. That is just the coolest thing ever. Now, the orange wire in the center is the one that's supposed to get some juice on it. Which wire? 
All right, so everything works except for the um, backrest will not go forward. Every, everything else works. The backrest will not go forward. The backrest on the wiring diagram forward is the orange wire, apparently. So anyway, I had the cover off of this thing. I wanted to find out where the orange wire was, and uh, it's in the middle. So when I do a voltage here, I got 11.3 volts, basically, uh, you know, 11.3, 11.3? Shouldn't it be 12? Why is it 11.3? Let's check the others. So the, all of these should have power on them. Um, those wires are coming from that solid, a solid state circuit, according to the diagram, uh, which I'm assuming is under the seat. Uh, so all of these should have power on them. 11.3, I'm using the door jam as a ground. So maybe that, that might have something. There's nothing on that one. I don't know what color that is. I think that was the gray. Oh, will you just shut up? This stupid meter. I'm gonna put my diagram over there. Yeah, it's the gray wire. What is the gray wire? Gray is the backrest back. Backrest forward. Don't ever buy a Klein Klein meter. Just don't ever do it. So maybe I'm misinterpreting the uh, drawing incorrectly, or maybe the drawing is wrong. That could be. So the backrest, it says back gray. Backrest forward is orange. 11.3 on the orange wire, according to the drawing. That's for forward. All right, let's go to the gray wire, according to the drawing. This is for back. It just says back. I got no voltage on there. All right, so here's the deal. Each one of these colored wires going to move various parts of the seat should have power. And when you engage the switch, you basically give it a path back to ground so it can drive the motor. So I checked, like, say, front, uh, making the front go up and down, black and white. They go into this connector. I had this cover off. Both those wires have power. Uh, entire seat back and forward. Uh, blue and violet in this cover, they have power. Um, rear, yellow and green over here, they have power. I haven't checked the memory stuff. I don't really care about that. Backrest, the gray wire, no power. The orange wire has power. So that tells me, unfortunately, I think the backrest not going forward is not a switch problem, but it is a power problem coming to the switch. That's my current theory. So what did I do? What am I doing right now? Well, I swapped on the backrest, I swapped the gray and orange wires. They're just power wires. I just swapped them around, put them in different positions, and I'm gonna plug this thing back in, and I'm gonna see if I can get my backrest to go forward. So the battery is still connected. I've been I've been careful not to touch anything, you know, short anything out. Let's just connect the switch back up. All right, let's see if we can make this backrest. I move it that way and it goes back. <laughs> it still goes back. It just, okay, I get it now. So I, I moved, I'm trying to move it forward, but I made it move back because I swapped the wire. That was stupid. However, it does prove that the switch is 100% now because I was able to move this thing forward and it actually moved the seat because I have the wires swapped. Uh, so I need to put power to the right spot to get this uh, seat back to move forward because right now I'm laying down there ready to take a nap. All right, I think we found out the source of our problem. Look at that. You know what I did? All right, watch this. My seat back's going forward now. And while it's working, let me go ahead and get my seat into a reasonable driving uh, situation here. Low, man, low. The back part up a little bit. And now let me bring the forward some, and it doesn't work. You know what the difference was? I sat in the seat. 
because I was underneath the seat fiddling around with the wires. There's a loose connection underneath the seat going to the uh, backrest motor. Uh, let's see what that did. I'm just feeling around. Having a crack attack? I hope not. Should have left well enough alone. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely a short under the seat. Let's do this. Let's lower the seat. Back to where I like it. Now let me uh, move it forward a little bit so a man of my limited stature can drive. <laughs> we'll raise the back up a touch. Oh man, that's so much nicer. Okay, all right, so here's the deal. I'm not taking this any farther today. I'm gonna put this door back together. Uh, this switch is good. Uh, the problem is under the seat. The wiring under the seat either is cut or loose or it's loose at the motor or something is going on. The, this control box, I think the solid state control box, I think that's under the seat as well. I could be wrong about that. I'm not sure where it is. Uh, I'll have to consult the service manual, but I guess my point is everything that we need to do in the door today is done and that's what I wanted to concentrate on for this video. We've con and we've confirmed the switch is good because I flipped the wires around and the, the switch worked this way and moved the seat back, but you get it, right? Well, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this uh, door back together and I'm going to call it a day. So we're going to call this a video. I appreciate you guys stopping by the channel. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd like to be notified whenever I release a new video, don't forget to click that little bell down below. You guys have a good one. And remember to enjoy restoring, maintaining, and driving your classic Mercedes.